Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Frederick Beekner was a writer and theologian who passed away a couple of years ago. He was a favorite of my wife's, and he's the author of 39 books that he published in all different types of genres, from fiction and autobiography and essays and sermons and, and other nonfiction. His books have been translated into 27 languages for publication around the world. Beekner's writings have often been praised for his ability to inspire readers to see the grace of God in their daily lives. Several years ago, we used a devotional by Frederick Beekner. A Lenten devotional that we uh, used during the season was called From Death to Life, 40 Questions for Lent. Today and the following weeks of Lent, I, I want to share some thoughts that Beekner had, as well as some thoughts of my own regarding the subject that he, he uh, wrote about. We will reflect on scriptures, on Jesus' path to the cross, as well as profound questions of the human mind concerning spiritual things and eternal life. Today I want to begin with a question that Beekner writes in the very first a devotional segment. He says, what would I do if this was my last day? That's a question I think most of you have probably asked. Since this question was written by Beekner back in the 1970s and 80s, he's now able to answer that question since he passed away a couple years ago. Although I don't know what that answer is. I don't know how he spent his last day. He had his last day on earth on August 15th of 2022. And in, but in his writings, he says, uh, in this devotional comment, he, does, he doesn't really give a list of what he would do on his last day, nor does he list the things that he thinks would, should inspire to do on our last day, what we should do. But he makes us think. If you had one last message to leave those you love in 25 words or less, what would it be? I think that these types of questions, however we answer, would probably indicate how we lived our lives and how uh, we established our priorities. What was important to us? Along with that same question he asked, of all the things that you've done in your life, which is the one that you would most want to undo? And then he asks, what is the one that makes you the happiest? These life questions cause us to reflect on the meaning and the trajectory of our lives. During Lent, we are called to reflect on our lives and how Christ is the change agent of our meaning and purpose. Remember the calling of Jesus' disciples when they were fishing along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. One minute they were fishing, the next minute they were dropping their nets and following him. He changed their lives, their whole trajectory of going from being a fisherman to being fishers of men was changed in an instant. Peter might have said at the end of his life, if asked that one question, he says, the one thing I would undo is when I denied I even knew Jesus on the night that he was crucified. But the thing that he might say made him the happiest is when he dropped those nets, those fishing nets, and he became a fisher of men. So if this were the last day of your life, what would you do with it? Beekner says, to hear yourself try to answer questions like these is to begin to hear something not only of who you are, but of both what you are becoming and what you are failing to become. So as you walk through this Lenten season, reflecting on the cross as well as your own priorities, 
Let these questions help determine who it is that you are. Amen.